Hi, welcome to the National Green Choice Online News Save Heart. And now I have uh, Dr. Darren Zook to share with us about the, the US politics today. Um, Dr. Darren, uh, please tell us about the uh, upcoming elections for the Obama campaign. Okay. Um, this is going to be a very interesting election. It's not going to be, I think, the hugely competitive election. One of the things that has occurred or one of the things that you can easily notice if you pay attention to American politics is that the United States is actually heavily divided. Uh, the elections, the last several elections have been um, very close. So you get election results, whether it's for congressional elections or presidential elections, in which 55% as opposed to something like 65 or 70 percent. What that does is it means that you know half the country is upset. Sure, somebody might win the election, but it means 45% of the people didn't want that candidate. And if you look at the two campaigns of Mitt Romney and Barack Obama, for instance, President Obama, they are each kind of trying to shore up support to, in essence, two very different Americas. There are people that um, have lost faith or they've been concerned about how far President Obama has veered away from his goals that he ran on in 2008 and they're kind of undecided at this point. They want to see action from Obama and of course he's responding as a way, you know, as a way anyone on campaign would do. You see all of the, you know, one after another, each week you'll notice that President Obama and his, uh, his cabinet are, are kind of pulling out these big new initiatives, such as the most recent one to offer work permits and amnesties, for instance, to uh, undocumented immigrants into the United States. That is a way, people would say, of, of attracting the Latino vote. So everyone's looking for a different vote bank, but it's interesting how they're trying, they're not really competing with the same vote banks, they're each choosing the very different vote banks, and that concerns me because that means you have a democracy that's not reaching out to the same people, they're trying to reach out to different groups. Now, if I had to predict the outcome of the election, and I guess I'll, I'll do that, it's, um, I don't, I think what's going to happen is I, I do think President Obama will probably get a second term. And I think that just because the Republicans took far too long to find a candidate. They went, they went usually much deeper into the primary season before one frontrunner, which in this case Mitt Romney, was able to be the Republican candidate. And the problem is, is that there, there's just too much baggage associated with Mitt Romney. The fact that he sent the rhetoric is, or the, the, you know, the, the argument is, he sent jobs to China. He sent jobs out of the country. That is very unpopular right now. Um, and he looks, he, just, he, he looks less dynamic next to Barack Obama. And so far, everyone knows exactly what Obama is doing. They can say, oh, we did that with the, uh, the undocumented workers. He's doing this. He's doing that. Um, and so far, Mitt Romney's camp is mostly in respond mode. Now, so I'm, if, if I had to predict if the election were to take place today, I would say Barack Obama would probably win, but I don't think he would win by an overwhelming majority. And that means you'll have a situation in which you have a president, even though he's a second-term president, who has a very weak mandate. If you know you get 52% of the vote, that's actually a very weak mandate. You can, someone can always say for every one person who voted against you, there was almost one other person who didn't want you. And that creates problems for a second term. You end up having to come in and re-justify yourself all over again. So it's, it's actually, there are people who are just very concerned. What people would have really liked to have seen would have been two presidential candidates with very, very clear platforms that offered clear alternative choices so people could try to choose which one was best. And we don't have that, at least not yet. And what kind of America are we going to see if Obama would, were to take office? Because he's been trying to you know, appease with different uh, mm -hmm minority groups like, like the gay and the lesbian movement that we saw that he announced uh, on TV saying that he would you know, uh, make an endorsement uh, for more and freer gay marriages right across America mm -hmm. and also you know um, what's Obama stand you know, for Israel is he, is he going to stand with them or is he against them or is he going to, to remain neutral? Um. In terms of domestic policy, such as same-sex marriage or you know, more recently with undocumented immigrants, the, these are all short-term strategies. These are all just between now and November. Okay, it's like we have to do something. 
offering any kind of work permit program to undocumented workers gets you votes in November. The long-term policy is immigration reform, and that is something that no one really wants to talk about right now, but no one's going to talk about it until after the election. Um, there are a lot of people who will probably end up voting for Obama, but their vote will be something along the lines of, I voted for you in 2008 because you said you are going to do all these things, and I'm disappointed. I'm voting for you now, I'm real, it's because I think you're better than the alternative, but at the same time, I want to see you, if you get a second term, I want to see you follow through on what you promised in 2008. So he is going to face pressure to go back to his original mandate. Um, that original mandate included things like the health care program, which has been something of a failure all along. Um, just people realized what a mess it was, and that was supposed to be kind of the signature program of his first administration, and it hasn't gone so well. So. What he's going to have to do if he gets a second term is, in terms of domestic policy, is he's going to have to either go back to the original mandate and, and deliver on that. If he said he was going to transform the economy, that needs to be done now. If there's going to be immigration reform, it's going to have to be done now, and it's going to have to look really good. So this is not going to be a like Bill Clinton's second term, where you come back and everyone's like, we want more of this, and you know, right now the Democratic Party looks very nostalgic about the Clinton years. Um, this is going to be a tough second term. Now, if Mitt Romney wins, suppose, you know, again, if I said if the election took place today, Obama might win. In November, who knows what's going to happen between now and then. If Mitt Romney were to win, um, he's also, he would also, I mean, this is a very difficult time to take the presidency. The same issues will still be there. What are you going to do about the domestic economy? What are you going to do about immigration reform? Those are all the same issues. Uh, and whoever becomes president is going to have to fix them and fix them quickly. Now you asked about Israel. In terms of foreign policy, this is also a big issue. You want a president who can, who can stand up and lead. There's been a real feeling in America in the last four years that Obama's vision of international relations has either been unclear or somewhat weak, that American leadership has been scaled back. Neither Mitt Romney nor Barack Obama will walk away from Israel. Israel has always been a strong ally, and the United States has always been firmly committed to that. The question is not really about the alliance with Israel. The question is always who is going to push the peace process forward? Who is going to put pressure on both the Palestinian leaders and Israel to get back to the table or get the peace process back on track? That's the issue. Um, neither Mitt Romney nor Barack Obama would ever walk away from Israel, but Israel is also creating some difficulties now and for the next, whoever becomes the next president uh, because of a decision, for instance, to build more settlements in the occupied territories and things like that. Those are, those are big headaches for the United States because uh, they're a violation of the peace accords. So, uh, but the, you, you won't see any abandoning of any of that. Uh, more importantly in the Middle East would be, of course, the issue of Egypt because by then we'll have a clear idea of where Egypt is going to go. Uh, you also know Barack Obama has even here in Singapore, has tried to expand the American presence in Asia. Military presence, political presence, economic presence, mostly to counterbalance China. And many countries are very receptive to that. Why? Because they've become concerned about a, a China that's been growing more dominant than it said it would become. Uh, the question is, is it too little too late? Is it, is it, does it look like you're just responding to what China has already done, or are you actually engaging in what we would call American leadership, or America partnership is probably a better way to look at it. That's the question you've got. Um, Obama is trying. People are slowly coming around to the idea that, that he might actually mean this. But if he, again, if he, if he does win a second presidency, people are going to want to see stronger American leadership, a, a, a more clear and a more powerful expression of American leadership or partnership abroad. Will America uh, see this leadership, uh, either Obama or uh, or the other Romney, yeah. Romney. Um, the peace process between Israel and the Palestinians. It depends. You know, Barack Obama has always tried to put himself in some sense of balance. He understands the aspirations to a Palestinian state. There are many people, many countries in the United Nations that support that. So the the trick for Barack Obama has always been how can I make sure the alliance between the U.S. and Israel is rock solid, but at the same time to commit ourselves to the peace process. Um, Bill Clinton had a number of initiatives on that. George Bush's administrations were mostly 
uh, in the war on terror mode. And so Barack Obama is one of the first presidents in, in many years to, be, to have the opportunity to try to get the peace process flowing again. Peace process flowing again. It hasn't quite happened. Mitt Romney, as, as a conservative, will be more likely to put security at the front as opposed to the peace process itself. And so he'll probably be a stronger ally of Israel and be much more inclined to look with suspicion upon any efforts by groups like Hamas to introduce a more militant solution into it. So both of them will have to revisit the peace process. Um, Mitt Romney's conservative tendencies will put security as the main thing. Barack Obama trying to position himself in a different way in relationship to the conservatives will probably put the idea of a peace process and democratization in the Middle East. About the U.S. Eco economics today, you know, what do you, how do you rate uh, Obama's performance? You know, is he go, has he actually performed well enough uh, beyond beyond the American uh, expectations, or somewhere in between? Most people, uh, people that were huge supporters of Obama when he ran in 2008 have become disillusioned and some of them even disappointed precisely because of the performance of the economy. Uh, many people make the argument, whether it's true or not doesn't matter sometimes in politics, that uh, President Obama and his administration were so focused on pushing through the universal health care program that they actually neglected the economic reforms that were necessary to get the American economy back on track and they lost very valuable time. So there are many people who voted for Barack Obama in 2008 on the idea that he would be able to bring America's economy back to a position of dominance, or at least a position of, of, of vibrancy, you know, a very vibrant economy. That hasn't happened. And to be honest, in the United States right now, given the fact that it's been some rough years, I mean, I'm, I'm from California, and the Calif California's budget is a disaster, uh, and it hurts everywhere. What Americans want is they want an economy that gets Americans back to work, and creates um, opportunities for people in the United States. That's what they want, and we have not really had that for the first Barack Obama administration. And they come out, we get the job reports every month in the United States, and they'll say we've created this many jobs, but the numbers are never really as impressive as, as people want them to be. And so that's going to be one of the central issues for the upcoming election is who has the better program to get the United States economy back on track. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Darazuk, for sharing with us, and thank you for joining me here at the National Quiz Troy Save Hi, I'm Robin Steinberg.